guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new series which I'm going to be filming and that is called the How I Revise series. So today we have the first video in that series and it's going to be How I Revised for GCSE Maths. So maths is my least favourite subject and to be honest I did not like revising it, I didn't revise it that much so I was thinking let's just do that one first, let's get it out of the way, nobody likes maths. So before we get into the tips and how I revised, I'm just going to give you like some background to it. So I got a grade 7 in maths GCSE which is equivalent to an A I think. Anyway, let's get into the tips and tricks and all the methods which I used to revise for my maths exams. So obviously as part of revision, you've got to actually learn the stuff. And I know it's not really like something that people think about, but I found that a revision guide really, really helped me for GCSE Maths. So this is the one that I used and our school gave these to us. It is the CGP GCSE AQA Mathematics Grade 91 course. I have looked and they do have these for all the exam boards. So if you're not on AQA, then you can still get your exam board version of this. Basically, if we just like flick to a page, what do we have? Compound growth and decay. So basically what I did with the revision guide to revise is I read through the page, I made any notes on a certain topic, so like maybe I would have written down this formula here and sort of annotated what each bit was as it, as it says here because I'm one of those people that writing down information really helps me to remember it. I can't just like read this and remember it, I've got to do something with it and I really recommend that. Just looking through this revision guide is never ever going to be enough and it's never going to be enough for any subject. So yeah, I'd read through this, I'd write down any formulas, I'd make notes on it and then also these revision guides have examples of questions that you would get on this topic which is so so useful and if I was struggling on a certain topic then I would copy down this example like just how they've written it out because as I said that would really help me remember it and also if you're writing down the examples like you're doing it step by step like you would do if you were doing it yourself so it really helps you to get like steps right and also these books have questions at the bottom and I really recommend doing those as well because I'm sure you will have all heard that maths is pretty much just about practice and that is true but obviously you've got to know the things as well so that is where the revision guide comes in because you've actually got to learn the information before you start practicing it. As you will know with the new GCSE we don't get a lot of formulas we hardly get given any in the exams, in the old specifications I know you got like a massive massive formula sheet with pretty much all of them on but we pretty much get these ones and that's it. So with the other formulas what I did to learn them is I made flashcards for them. I know that sounds like really odd like flashcards for maths, what, how does that even work? But basically for formulas it's super super simple, you just write like formula for volume of a sphere and then on the other side of the flashcard you'd write the formula. It's pretty pretty self-explanatory because if you don't know the formulas then you're not gonna get very far in an exam question. As I said before maths is pretty much all about practice so my advice for GCSE maths is do as many practice questions as you can possibly do. Along with those revision guides, my school also gave us these, which is the Ari Van Board Mathematics Workbook. And basically, this is filled with questions all on the topics that are in the revision guide. So what I did is, once I'd read through a page in the revision guide, made my notes, whatever, I would try some questions in this on that topic. But if you are pretty confident in that topic already, then don't just like stick to the easy ones at the top. By the end of the year I was pretty much just doing the harder questions in this and the harder questions are these ones in black at the bottom because if you just keep doing easier questions then you are never ever going to progress so you need to go and do the harder ones as well to challenge yourself and you will improve your skills by doing that. If you do want to get a high grade then you need to try the hard questions <laughs> because you're not going to get a grade 9, 8, 7, whatever by doing the easy questions in the book. 
just because you can do them and you know you can and it makes you feel good. You need to challenge yourself with maths. That's the only way you can ever progress. If you keep just doing things that you know you can do, then you're never gonna get past that level, whatever that level may be. As well as doing practice questions, it's really good to do practice papers. So to revise, I think I pretty much did like every specimen paper there was. You guys are pretty lucky because you already have the past papers from when I did my GCSE because I was the first year of the GCSE so you've got our like actual GCSE papers to practice off but we didn't have anything like that. So we only practice off the specimen papers and I found them actually quite different to the actual exam. I think the specimen papers are actually harder <laughs> than the exam so it was like a bit disheartening. But it's really good to practice the exam style questions because it's one thing doing questions in a book like that when the title is at the top of the page, you know the question is on like quadratic graphs or whatever, but in an exam it may be hidden what you actually have to do. I actually hate this about the maths exams because you're looking at a question and it's like what do you actually want me to do here? You basically got to like read between the lines and work out like what it's about. I remember in my GCSE exam um, it looked like a really really simple question, I remember this. It looked like you just had to add a couple things up but then no! What did you have to do? A quadratic simultaneous equation! So it's really good to sort of get used to that exam style where you've got to actually work out what the question is about. Also, you need to do like the specimen papers and the past papers off your own bat. Yes, you will get set homework of past papers and stuff, but if you really want to do well, then you've got to do this practice yourself. You can't rely on like teachers setting it for you. I'm sure you can access printers at school so you can print off past papers, specimen papers, whatever, and do them yourself at home. Also, you can always do the old GCSE past papers. I did loads and loads of those mainly because there's only a limited amount of specimen papers and I mean maths is still maths. The style of question was different, like the old GCSEs was a lot lot easier and I did really well on those ones compared to how I do in the new GCSE but I mean you're still practicing the same skills so it's worth having a go at if you run out of past papers for the new GCSE and specimen papers. Also, it's really, really important to mark any papers that you do, whether it be a specimen paper, a past paper, questions in the workbook, whatever. Marking your work is where you're going to find where you're going wrong and your areas of weakness. If you just do a paper and then don't mark it and just forget about it, then you may as well have not done the paper. It's really easy to find the mark schemes online as well, so I recommend just going through, seeing where you went wrong, and if there is a particular topic that you keep going wrong in the past papers on, then do more questions on that topic. Or if it's a certain style of question that you keep missing out the marks on, because in the new GCSE, there is like written questions where you've got to do like a couple marks on like and you've got to actually write an answer, there's no working out involved. I always dropped marks on those questions because I never ever knew what on earth it was asking me to say. So I did do quite a lot of practice on like those written ones and I think it probably did help me in the exam. So basically, find your areas of weakness through these questions, through the past papers, and then work on those areas of weakness. That sort of goes with the next thing that I'm going to say, and that is don't revise the things that you already know. There are always going to be bits of maths that you find easier than others. I personally found trigonometry quite easy, so I didn't practice that as much as other things, like probability. I really found probability hard. Not like the like lower end probability, but like the high grade probability was just like, whoa. This is especially important towards the end of year 11, where you have a very limited amount of time. And if you keep going over things that you already know, then you are simply wasting your time. You should have highlighted your areas of weakness through the papers as I said, so focus on these areas of weakness. Revise the formulas over and over again, do more questions in that style, whatever. Don't keep going over things that you already know. I know it's really tempting because if you can do all the questions then it makes you feel good and whatever, but that's not the point. 
and if you do have these particular areas of weakness and you're still really really struggling on them then just ask your teacher for help this is what I did I got him to go through the actual like process of the questions also there are videos on YouTube where you can go and there's people actually working through a question talking it through as they go along and I found that super super useful for maths because I find it quite good to revise by watching someone else work it out and then I'll do it like along with them that really helped me so towards the end of the year what I would do is I would look through that revision guide and I basically filtered through everything that I knew and everything that I was like a little bit unsure on still and then what I did is on the bits that I was still like unsure on couldn't remember the formulas for etc is I made this which is basically a condensed page of everything that I like kept forgetting or whatever and there's no examples on this it's purely just formulas and yeah but just basically formulas and scale factor stuff and I have some on here as well and this is all the stuff by the end of the year that I still wasn't 100% on and then like the night before the exam and stuff you can look at this and you can focus on these particular topics and then also in the time that you get before you actually go into the exam I found it really useful just to read over my condensed pages just so this stuff was fresh in my mind like five minutes before I went into the exam so that is how I revised for my maths GCSE exams and those are all the things that helped me get the grade that I did so I hope this video proved useful to you and as usual make sure to like, subscribe and follow my social media which will be linked down below in the description as usual. Bye guys!